Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Veterans Home in Holyoke, the groundbreaking ceremony for the new home. My name is Michael Lazo, and I'm the superintendent here at the Veterans Home. Today, we're thrilled to have Governor Healy, Congressman Neal, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Driscoll, Secretary Santiago, Board Chair Collins, CEO Albanese, DCAMP Commissioner Gladstone, Senator Vilas, Representative Duffy, Mayor Garcia, and Chairman Cassidy, staff, veterans, and many distinguished guests, especially our own veteran residents. I would like to take a minute to introduce uh, Rose Roy, who will say, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Rose is a Navy veteran uh, and is just shy of her 101st birthday. So if you're able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Rose. And it's my pleasure now to introduce Governor Mara Healy. Thank you so much, Superintendent. And boy, it is just so wonderful to be here today with all of you. Uh, Rose, what a, what a wonderful honor it is for all of us to be able to be led off by you today, a trailblazing veteran a resident of the Veterans Home. Uh, Rose, you and your neighbor here, Althea Gibson, who is 100, have together seen us through, uh, each of you, nearly a century of our nation's history. You've made history yourselves, and we are grateful uh, to you for your service. So thank you for sharing. I asked Rose her secret to a long life. She said spaghetti. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. <laughs> um, I want to uh, also acknowledge the folks who've joined us here today. Uh, we have um, a number of folks who, who've come, uh, importantly from the legislature. There's. Um, there's no better legislature in the country or state legislature in terms of making sure that veterans and service members and families get the support they need, finding ways to give even more support, and that recently happened through uh, the recent budget that, that we had an opportunity to sign just a couple weeks ago. But I want to begin by uh, thanking Senators uh, Vilas, um, who in particular has been an incredible advocate for veterans and families here and around the state. Senator Oliver, Senator Comerford, Senator Gomez, thank you all for being here. We have our friends from the House and Representative Kerry, Representative Saunders, Representative Ariaga, uh, Representative Duffy. Um, we also have uh, mayors with us. Uh, we appreciate Mayor Garcia is here, Mayor McCabe. Um, uh, the new mayor I just mentioned, Mayor of the Hill, uh, over to the, to the right. Um, our city councilors too, we have city councilor Tallman, uh, Murphy, Rambaletti, um, Councillor Rivera, Councillor uh, Anderson, Councillor Jourdain, and others. And I, and I think others have come in, so I just I appreciate the support from the local and state level. And of course, our fantastic uh, Congressman, Richie Neal. I want to thank you for your incredible dedication and determination, uh, Congressman Neal. This represents a significant a significant investment once again in federal funds uh, to make all this happen and uh, we really appreciate all your support in securing such a transformative level of investment and funding uh, for uh, a place that I know has meant so much to you, to your family, to, to constituents. Um, and again, many thanks to um, the legislature in the budget that we enacted last week. 
we recently increased veteran services funding by eleven and a half million dollars. So I want to thank our colleagues in the State House. Thank you for your commitment in making sure that our veterans are getting the care, the services, the opportunities, the respect that not only they need, but so richly deserve. Uh, to all of our veterans, most importantly, most importantly, today is about you. Each and every one of you who have served, it is about you. And that's why we are hired to work for you. Uh, go to work, whether it's in a state house or our nation's capital, to secure funding, to pass laws, to get the right resources in place, to make sure that we are better serving those who have served all of us. That's what today is about. So I want to thank our veterans, our service members, our military families. Uh, thank you for your devotion to our country, for defending freedom, for inspiring all of us, and making possible all the freedoms that we hold dear. We're here to honor that service. We're here to honor that service in a day and an age when there are a lot of words out there. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about the deeds. What do you actually do? And uh, that's, that's what today is about. It's about, it's about showing up and it's about the work. And um, every day, every day of this rebuilding project of beyond, it is gonna be all about the veterans and those who have served. Uh, we wanna provide the very best, not just here in Holyoke, but in Chelsea, all across our veteran services programs and facilities. This renewal of the veterans home at Holyoke is a labor of love and respect for our administration. And I am so delighted to be joined here today by our Lieutenant Governor uh, from a military family, Kim Driscoll, who uh, you'll, you'll hear from. But um, you know, for both of us, we, we're really clear, this is a $482 million investment in our veterans. It's gonna be a facility that veterans, their families, the entire state of Massachusetts will be so proud of. And we wanna be clear that our investment in the home symbolizes a next level of care and commitment to veterans and families, their families all across the state. I want to begin by, um, by uh, acknowledging as well Secretary John Santiago. You know, um, one of the things that came out in the last few years, some of you may know, was the creation, for the first time, long overdue, the creation of a cabinet level secretary of Veterans Affairs. That happened, and the Lieutenant Governor and I are proud that we were able to appoint the, the state's first ever Secretary of Veterans Affairs in John Santiago. And we thank Secretary Santiago for his service to the Commonwealth, to our country, um, as he is a veteran, we also thank him for the incredible work he's done in quickly building out a team uh, led by Secretary Santiago, who also happens to be a physician who till, still takes shifts at Boston Medical Center. Uh, he's built out an incredible team and completed, importantly, we got the funding, which is great. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, but we had to make sure that we were implementing and shovel ready, and that's what uh, Secretary Santiago was able to do in just a quick four, th four months. And so we are grateful to, to you for, for making, that, uh, making that happen. Uh, again, I wanted to um, thank separate, uh, Superintendent uh, Mike Lazo. We had an opportunity to visit with some of the staff just a little while ago. Um, earlier in the day, we had an opportunity to visit with some families. and. Uh, to a person, everyone remarked on the incredible care and compassion and excellence of the staff here at the home. And you have shown incredible devotion to your work, incredible dedication, incredible sacrifice, all the while for some of you going through some very difficult and challenging times. And we appreciate your resilience, we appreciate your resolve, 
I know the families do very, very much, and uh, particularly those who weren't able to physically be present at the time in one's life where you absolutely want to be there. And what staff was able to do in helping families be connected to their loved ones, and I know this is a hard day and a bittersweet day for so many and a heartbreaking day for so many, I just want to underscore the work and the commitment and the care of the staff here and what they did uh, to, to connect with families, with, with loved ones at that time. And speaking of, of loved ones, this is about the spirit of the loved ones, uh, like the spirit of all of our veterans. That spirit endures. And our obligation is to work every single day to honor them to honor all who have served and who serve today. All of the resources, the care, the collective determination that goes into building this facility and rebuilding this facility is done in their memory. All of our investments in veteran support and programming across the state moves forward in their memory. So thank you all for being here and at this time, I'm honored to introduce the Dean of the Massachusetts Delegation, our outstanding champion in Congress, and your own Congressman Richie Neal. Thanks, Governor, very much for those nice remarks and introduction. And thanks to the Lieutenant Governor and the Veterans Affairs Secretary Santiago, as well as the legislative delegation that's here and also to the families that we had a chance to talk with because you can't ignore the tragedy of what happened here and part of our uh, sense of renewal today is based upon their determination uh, through were very grim days when we got together to talk but you're here today because of renewal and your advocacy on behalf of the veterans that are here uh, is profound i also want to thank dennis mcdonald the secretary of veterans affairs he was uh, obama's chief of staff, uh, chief of staff. And I talk with him regularly. I'm making sure that the money came through here to proceed to this day. And But there's something else I want to acknowledge, and that is uh, uh, I'm dating myself, but I grew up reading obituaries. Uh, it used to be called the Irish sports pages. Yeah. Some of you are smiling because you know when I speak. And what was significant about that was that when I read during the grim days, but what I still continue to read about what you all did at 18, 19, or 20 years old, unbelievable. Whether it was World War II or Korea or Vietnam or today Afghanistan and Iraq and Somalia. So the need has been refreshed because there are now more than a million new veterans because of Iraq and Afghanistan. I call attention to that because the contract that we made with them has to be honored. And to understand fully that the new legislation, the PAC Act, I encourage all to take a hard look at. It's probably the most important advance in veterans' services in the last 30 years. Take advantage of it. Michelle Brown is here from my office. She handles, uh, and she's an Iraqi war vet. She handles veterans' affairs. And getting answers to this is really going to be important for all of you as you need that care. So as part of my reference to reading obituaries, one of the things that the governor, and we're here today because of Maura Healy. That's a really important consideration. She has made sure that we've been able to see this through with a federal partnership. As I was talking earlier about obituaries today, in all of those obituaries, what is striking is the number of family members who cite the care that their loved one received here in Hollywood. And you're nodding your heads, I can see that. It's startling as to what happened. So this is really a nice day for all of you because you've been able to see this through. And on a personal note, Bob Garvey passed away two weeks ago and uh, came back to his old neighborhood in Springfield from the North End and Hungry Hill uh, for the right of internment. But what's striking about it is his family offered their best wishes to the professional staff here at the Soldiers Home. He got great care. Thanks to you on behalf of the United States of America. Now, as a, 
nice opportunity for me to, uh, we got three or four phone calls and they were all successful. Those are good phone calls. Uh, but Dr. Santiago is not only a great advocate for you, as uh, uh, the governor has pointed out, uh, but just as importantly, uh, he's very good where I see things frequently playing out in public life, and that's conversations. You know, we don't, we didn't do social media with each other. We actually talked. We weren't posting about our thoughts and our emotions and feeling better about ourselves. We simply went back and forth. He said, can you see if you can get this done? And we did. So I'll let him talk about it. And the last guy that I do want to acknowledge just before the secretary comes up is Paul barabani has been a great friend to me over a long period of time. And uh, we were here during the really grim days, Paul and I. And he's another one that deserves an acknowledgement for helping to see this through. Paul? Santiago. Good afternoon. It really is a privilege to be standing before you as the first Secretary of Veterans Services, but particularly on this occasion. So I'd be remiss if I didn't shed a little bit of light of how that came to be. Not my appointment per se, but rather the creation of this office, and who was responsible for that. And the short answer is because of you. It's because of your advocacy on behalf of our veteran community, and your desire to make sure that our veterans get the attention and resources that they deserve. That's why we're here today. And what makes today especially gratifying is that along with today's groundbreaking, this new secretariat, I want to let you know that because of the leadership of Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, two public servants who have always stood by our veteran community, that our best days are still ahead. Because we are committed to making sure that Massachusetts is second to no one when it comes to veteran services. And to do so not just with words, but with actions. Because actions are what the Healy Driscoll administration has been taken. Because of them, the largest state investment ever for veteran services was just signed into law last week. Because of them, and with the crucial support of Congressman Neal, we were finally able to secure the federal funding to make this dream a reality. And it's because of them and the leadership you see up here today, including our legislative colleagues, that I can assure you that better days are ahead here at home. Because we're all too familiar with what happens when the needs of our veterans are not prioritized. And those tragic events that took place during the height of COVID will always be a reminder of what's at risk and that there's still so much more to do. For those of you who may have lost a loved one here at Holyoke, or even a part of yourself, know that we stand with you. We hear you, we see you, and we honor that loss today. And although we can't change the past, we can shape the future, and that's what today is about. I want to end by expressing my sincere gratitude to Chairman Collins and the board, especially to Superintendent Lazo, his leadership team, the clinical staff, and all those who make this place run. It's been a challenging few years, but know that we are so grateful for all your efforts. And to our veteran residents and their families, we will continue to provide the quality of care that you deserve. And I can't wait to work closely with DCAM, the Commodore Builders, the Walsh Brothers to get this new home, home up as soon as possible. So thank you for the opportunity to share a few words. And I want to next introduce my good friend, a champion for veterans, a veteran himself, Senator Vilas. Good afternoon, everybody. I have this problem where I write down remarks or or not, as my office will attest to. And, that, and every time I come up here, I realize I don't know why I do it because I can't read my own writing. <laughs> um, so, so the first thing I'm going to say is to the governor: it really, really matters that you are here today.
lot of people may not know this unless you really pay attention to the politics. Um, the governor was sworn in, newly elected governor, newly sworn in, I should say, um, gave a very eloquent, long speech. The first thing mentioned was support for veterans. Um, and that, as a veteran, as a proud legislature, as the chair of Veterans and Federal Affairs, that was beyond me. Thank you very much again. This is obviously a very uh, joyful but somber occasion. Uh, tough conversation to have to talk about. It. Right after 2020, soon after all this happened, I remember feeling weakened, emasculated. You know how to help. I remember reaching out to the home, asking, demanding to come in here. I don't know why. Uh, I guess to enter, to enter the fight, to do whatever could be done. Um, so I take honor in that. You know, I reached out to Rep Duffy's predecessor, Rep Duffy, Rep Finn, um, and we came in. And we had conversations. This was this was April 2020. Um, and I fell back a little bit. And I saw a gentleman who was a resident. And he was in full uniform, full Air Force gear. Full uniform. And I paused and I walked back. And I said, Sir, how you doing? And I will never forget this the day that I lived. He got to attention and rendered a salute. That's what we have here. That's the quality of the person that we have at this home. Soon thereafter, I convened what I'm going to call family listening session, for lack of a better way to describe it. There are a lot of family members. And they came forward with three demands. Three. We need a new building. Today, we're honored to start that process. We need to change the makeup, the governance structure of the home. We need to elevate to a cabinet level, a commissioner, to a secretary position. You need to clear up the chain of command. And I want to look at all my colleagues over here at the state level. Because a lot of behind the scenes happened on this legislation. We fought like heck. People came back with a, let's have 192 beds. We said, no, not enough. There's too many service members that are going to be coming back. Too many family members. Sorry, Governor Baker, we want more. We got more. Governance did that. And then lastly, I think this is most important, the one thing that I heard loud and clear, family members, many of whom I'm looking at in this crowd right now, people who I now consider friends. Two words, never again. Some of the, the family members, and I don't, I don't want to chuckle here because some of them, uh, they're, they're real, they're the most special human beings in the world. But there's a lot of comedians amongst the group, too. They send me some pretty interesting text messages throughout this process. And that, you didn't know it at the time, I'm sure, but the motivation, the strength, the courage to keep on pushing to keep on pushing forward. Not long ago, I don't know how long ago, but not long ago, um, I was up here calling bingo. And, uh, you know, like most times I call bingo, messing it up. <laughs> and I had a lot of staff members here 
um, who are bailing me out for messing up their bingo um, staff staff the staff you want to talk about people who are absolutely remarkable you come into these corridors talk to them they'll, t they'll tell you a family tree about their veterans a family tree to the staff all levels all levels thank you for your service This is, this is so much bigger than us. This is so much bigger than us. We've had so many people who are part of this process. Paul, John, the Holyoke Soldiers Home Coalition, the family members, the staff, the administrators, the state, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. But for me, the family members, and what they said, the stories they told about their loved one. Not in service, in many instances in service, but just the type of human being that they were before what caused them to serve this country and after the remarkable lives that they live and contributed to our society. We lost veterans but we lost so many great human beings. And I'll never forget that. So that third thing, that third thing that the family member said, never forget and never let something happen again. That, my friends, that. We don't know the answer to that today. We don't know the answer to that today. A year, two years from now, can we come here and have an event like this? Here's why it's important, more so than ever. Today in America, today in America, recruitment hasn't been this down since post-Vietnam. Less than one half of 1% of the country is serving, is serving. What kind of message are we gonna send to a young man a young woman who's contemplating service. We don't do stuff like this. Massachusetts is the best place in the nation to be a veteran, but make no mistake about it, if we rest on our laurels, that will be surpassed. Everybody, thank you so much. Family members. I had a, um, I had an event this last cycle, we'll say. And a bunch of family members showed up from this place. Family members, some who had lost some, some who had not, but we're here for that. <clears throat> Trust me when I tell you, your friendship, your love, your everything, will just drive this train. Trust me when I tell you that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Vilas. Uh, at this time, we'll invite uh, Representative Pat Duffy. I mean, how do you follow that? Um, thank you, Senator, and you're a great partner here in uh, delegation and serving Holyoke. Uh, it's it's beyond an honor to be here and to be here for this occasion. You know, thank you to the administration, both our great state administration, our congressmen, the great Holyoke Soldiers Home, Veterans Home uh, administration. And it's also, I want to thank all my colleagues. It's incredible as always to see you here. There couldn't be better partners. I was sworn in in January 2021 but we were in the middle of the fight to make sure that the lessons that we learned in 2020 yeah, would, uh, thank you very much, uh, would endure. 
So being here with you all in, before veterans, I'm the daughter of a World War II vet myself. Families and staffers. In many ways, I've actually worked at this home for over 20 years. Never, I did not have the skill set to be a staffer, um, but I was a field union rep for SEIU, for the CNAs, the LPNs, uh, and to be, whenever I come back here, I see folks that I worked with then. So, to give all of you, veterans, families, staffers, the home that you deserve is the honor of my public service career. So, thank you all for inviting me here. my friend and my mayor and my partner in public service, Mayor Joshua Jackson. Hello, everybody. That's my senator and that's my state rep, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I do uh, I thank you to all the state delegation, our local leadership that's here today. I also want to give a quick shout out to our Director of Veteran Services, Jesus Pereira, who's here. And my Police Chief, who's here also, uh, uh, Police Chief Pratt. And also a shout out to the Pioneer Valley Building Trades and Carpenters Union and any union that's here today Thank you so much for being here. Governor Healy and your administration, it's an honor and pleasure always to be in your presence. Uh, your office is incredibly responsive, uh, and I certainly most appreciate you being here, at, to not just today, but every day. Um, your, your heart is out there, and uh, I'm so much looking forward to continue to work with your administration to navigate all sorts of quality of life issues here in the city of Holyoke, as well as the region, because here in the region, we're collaborators. We partner with our local municipalities. Mayor McCabe, thank you for being here also. Uh, Mayor of Chicopee, Mayor of Springfield, we work together to try to look out for our population, in particular, our most vulnerable population when they need us the most. In the wake of World War II, in response to an influx of wounded warriors, the Hoyoke Soldiers Home, or now Veterans Home, was built to provide care for those who had served their country so valiantly. The continuity of care continued for more than 60 years. This morning, or should I say now this afternoon, as we commence construction of a new home for those who have served their country, we renew our commitment not only to their health, but also to their safety and their dignity. So once again, I want to thank everyone for coming together in support of our veterans, because that's what we do. We come together, not just in time of need, we keep putting our heads together to understand where are the gaps, and there are gaps, and we're not perfect. I think we've learned that quickly in April 2020. But how quickly everyone came together to bring some resolution. Although it's not gonna bring back those that we lost during that time, and I'm so sorry for your lost ones that happened during that time. I'm so grateful and honored to live in a commonwealth of Massachusetts, a place where people come together, and our federal delegation, Richie Neal, Thank you so much as well. Come together to step up and close those gaps. And Senator, I second everything you said. You always have a way to hit the nail right on the head. Um, and that's every reason why he's my Senator. So thank you so much. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce to you now Board of Trustee Chairman Sean Collins. Uh, good afternoon. It's good uh, to go after all these uh, well-spoken individuals. I concur with everything they said and, uh, and second the emotion. Uh, some great words. But I, I'm Sean Collins and the uh, chairman of the Board of Trustees here uh, at the Holyoke Veterans Home. I'm the new chairman. I, uh, I joined the board uh, back in 20 uh, during the, the uh, crisis that we had here. 
Um, but it's not my first connection uh, with the Holyoke Soldiers Home. In fact, uh, as my wife is here in the audience, we were talking about how she dropped me off here one day for work 40 years ago. So my first uh, effort into the clinical world was here at the Soldiers Home because my, my dad, as Congressman Neal will tell you, uh, was a physician here back in the 60s up to the 80s and, and at the Springfield Municipal Hospital. I always give my dad the recognition he deserved. I always wanted to serve in the military, but a bad knee from a Cathedral High School football injury uh, kept him out of the service. But uh, my connection to uh, the Soldiers Home uh, is been longstanding. Uh, had, I had to continue to have the opportunity to serve at the Pentagon uh, in my current role. Uh, and do everything that I can to make sure that things happen uh, at a certain level to take care uh, of all those that serve in uniform today and all those in the past. And I do want to give you know, special recognition, don't have the time because I think the, the rumors out on the street, give Collins a microphone and, and be ready for an hour's worth of talk. I was told I can't. Thanks, General Keefe. I think you're the one spreading that rumor. Don't be laughing, though, uh, I trusted your name. Uh, here I am wasting time. Anyways. Um, the reality is um, uh, we, we really need to, to focus in on the thanks, uh, and that thanks goes to the staff here at this institution. Uh, working through... <laughs> I'm a clinician. Uh, I have, a, uh, I have a, a, a focus on clinical operations, so having stepped into the role on Board of Trustees asking some very tough questions, um, the staff was phenomenal uh, in getting those answers and putting some, some things in place that I think are benchmark for the country, not just for the Commonwealth, but for the country, uh, answering those questions. Uh, I believe that we are here today because of the interest of people before today, before last year, before two years ago, and that's Congressman Neal and, and Governor Healy, who really got us over the goal line. And I can tell you, being new to the Board of Trustees, there were some very uh, spicy uh, discussions with the previous administration. Very spicy. And when they asked me, I'm a volunteer on the Board of Trustees, it's, you know, just do a little bit of time. I mean, those meetings went for three, four hours, holding the administration accountable. And uh, we pushed to make sure that this institution that you're going to see being built was what we felt as a Board of Trustees was worthy of the veterans that are entrusted to our care. So I am the advocate, and I take my role very seriously. I actually swore an oath when I joined the Board of Trustees to represent the, uh, the community of Western Mass. And I take my oaths very seriously, and that's what I'll do. So the, be the best pleasure of all outside of your leading us roads that was phenomenal, um, is sitting in front of some family members in a very handsome, young man in that picture, uh, you know, he's got three stripes on him, three stripes, you know, very handsome, I thought I was looking in a mirror, but, um, but I thank you and the family members for sticking with us to help us get it right, and I know some recognition has gone out there uh, for some other folks, uh, but we have to do this together as a community uh, and get it right. And it's not just because I, you know, I have my, uh, have my kids put me in a home here uh, later on in life. That's not the case at all. It's to make sure that we have a place to take care of our veterans. And that's the one thing that always has impressed me, is for those veterans here, your families, and how passionately they feel about you, making sure you get the care. And, and just that's, I just, in just one little piece, if my kids have that one little piece for me, I will have done my job as a parent. So uh, I thank everyone today, uh, Governor, uh, Congressman Neal, all the other um, uh, esteemed colleagues, I thank you all. And, and I have to uh, say Secretary Santiago called me the very first day that I was elected as uh, the chairman uh, to have a discussion, uh, to let us know that this administration is behind us to get things right. So. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention. I blew my three minutes, but I just had to. And I'm going to uh, do, uh, do what's right, so I'm actually going to introduce uh, my, the person following me. And that is Joe L. Albanese, the Chairman and CEO of Commodore Walsh.
congressman, lieutenant governor, senator, secretary, mayor, representative, trustees, general, veterans. <clears throat> the construction industry is a great industry. We build things that endure, and our workforce is an important element of our greater economy. We have great pride in the projects that we work on. No matter if you're a laborer, tradesperson, engineer, architect, project manager or superintendent. When you drive by a project you worked on, your sensibility is, I built that. I built that. But here we stand in the early days of the project, a great moment in time to acknowledge all of the work that's taken to get here. Years of project planning and design, and no shortage of people to thank. I want to first thank and acknowledge Commissioner Carol Gladstone and her team from DCAM. Our DCAM partners include Charles Kelsey, Gannett, Ramakandran, Jay Mitchell, Gordon Wren, Joe Fazio, Mark Johnson, Susan Goldfisher, Frank Kern, Don Hadley, Suzette Waters, and Megan Costa, as well as Mike McNulty, consulting with DCAM. Thank you for your leadership and your confidence in selecting Commodore Walsh to build this project. Pat Associates, our architect led by Scott Parker and Susan Blomquist, has assembled a first-rate design team informed by the work that they did at the Chelsea Soldiers Home to provide a world-class design, a program that will build together. A purpose. You know, so many projects that we work on have purposes, impacting communities in an important way. And I can't think of a project in my career that's more purposeful than the Holyoke Veterans Home. As a 28-year veteran of the Naval Construction Forces, I spent much of my career supporting veterans and could not be more delighted to lead this team on this project. I promise all of you, the Commodore Walsh team is ready. We've assembled the best team of managers, supervisors, subcontractors, and tradespeople to deliver this important facility to serve our veterans, to give them the programs, services, and support that they deserve for their selfless service to our nation as they continue to preserve freedom for each of us. Service. <clears throat> You've heard a lot about that today. and. <clears throat> Veterans often today get thanked for their service. But all of us share the same sentiment when we do get thanked. We appreciate that we serve, but we also know that our service has shaped us, our values, and who we are. How about a round of applause for all the service members in this audience? As we move forward, I'd like to shout out to our labor force, the foundation of our capability, and to Frank Callahan and Colton Andrews for their leadership and all the building trades. Um, and to the Commodore Walsh team, led by Brad Forrest, Will Schuster, Ryan Tracy, Natalie Assens, Jonathan Marini, Tim Seneco, and Drew Dana. Thank you for your commitment and your role in getting us to this point. Congratulations to the Commodore Commonwealth and all of the federal, state, and local leaders who brought their vision to this point of implementation. And thank you. Thank you for entrusting Commodore to deliver on your dreams. We will not let you down. Now, let's get to work. I'd like to turn this back over to uh, Super Superintendent Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Albanese. Uh, and thank you all again for being here today, and thank you to all of our speakers. Uh, your eloquence is very much appreciated today. Uh, the word groundbreaking uh, today stands for more than literally breaking the ground with shovels, which we'll do in just a few minutes. Uh, however, groundbreaking truly describes a state-of-the-art facility that will open on these grounds in a few, few short years uh, that will take care of a new era of veterans here in Massachusetts. Uh, not too long ago, uh, John Feinkevitz from our maintenance department, he's our uh, unofficial historian of the home, uh, forwarded to me a pamphlet or a program from the original ribbon cutting of the current building from April 27, 1952, uh, over 71 years ago. In looking through that, I found a welcome address written by then Commandant Paul Martel, and I thought it would be appropriate to close out with, with a quote from his speech because it still rings true today. He said, this indeed is an epic day for all of us, specifically for the veterans of the Commonwealth and proudly for the citizens of the Commonwealth. Commandant Martel went on to say, 
We who are entrusted with the duty of executing the provisions of this institution have pledged our untiring efforts with only one goal in mind, namely to carry out our mission successfully. His words are what we live by today, to provide care to our veterans, now and in the future, with honor, dignity, and respect. Uh, thank you all again for coming, uh, and if the speakers could just join us at the pile behind me. Thank you.